Hi guys, welcome to a new video. As you saw in the introduction today, we will be taking care of getting one of these fancy little guys set up and use like a key card on your system. Now, with key cards, typically you set them in, you log in, maybe with an additional pin or password, and then the moment you take them out, it logs you out or locks your system. With this, we'll be doing something similar while we do a key exchange with our PC here from this USB. And thus, once we press that button, it logs us in. Once we take it out, it logs us out and as such. So what we're going to do first, I'm going to just sit this in here. We won't fully plug it in just yet, but we are going to log into our target system. Now let's pull up real VNC here. Sign into our remote system. Yep. Use our super secure password circles accept that connection and just like that we are on so now our next stage is to prepare our system first we're going to go ahead open up a terminal and we're going to need root access so we'll do sudo su type in our password clear it out and then we are going to install an application called libpam-u2f we can search for it by using apt search pam u 2 f and there it is so we'll do apt install lib pam oh if i can type dash u 2 f yep and it should be available now so next we're actually going to want to make a directory so if we exit out of here clear it again and then we are currently in our home directory, as you can see by that little uh, Tyndall or squiggly, whatever it's called. Uh, we'll go ahead and make a new directory in our home slash dot config forward slash u e co. And then from there, we can do a little squiggly dot config u e co. And then from here, we're going to run pam u2f cfg dash o pam colon forward slash forward slash our system host name, this being parrot as you can see right here, parrot dash i, oh, if I can type, pam colon forward slash forward slash again our host name, parrot, and then greater than squiggly forward slash config ubco and then u2f underscore keys and now it's waiting for us to insert our key do that now we're going to enter in our pin this is only if you've already set a pin on your uh, little key if you have not it will be waiting for you and i'll show you that here in a minute but as you can see our green is solid we'll enter in our pin for that key and as you can see it's blinking so we press that button verify our confirmation and the key exchange has occurred so now that our key is enrolled in the system it's not going to do anything just yet we're going to first enroll sudo for two-factor now we are once again going to need root so we'll do sudo su clear that out and then nano etc pam dot d sudo you can use vim neo vim whatever text editor you like it just as long as you can edit this file and then as you can see, we have common off, common account, and common session, session, excuse me, not interactive. These are other PAM modules that are used to interact with sudo to verify that you are authorized, as well as this, uh, oh, this little session required PAM limits. So we're actually going to append it to this file by typing off space required space PAM underscore U2F dash or dot SO, excuse me, Q, origin equals pan colon forward slash forward slash our system host name again make sure to use the same one we used earlier this being parrot and then app id equals pan colon forward slash forward slash once again parrot or your system host name now we'll do control x y and save that file and now if we exit out of here we do sudo su Oh, we probably need a new terminal here. Exit out of this one. We use sudo su. 
we'll enter in our password and it wants us to interact with the device. If we pull it out, we can't do anything. Once again, despite us adding in our password, it is looking for that key. So as a result, we'll need to insert that key, enter in the correct password, please touch the device. And just like that, we have root access. Now this is required, as you saw within nano pcpm.d sudo. If we want to set it as optional, say for example, you may not have your key in all the time and you only want your password, basically it comes down to if the key is in there, then key plus password. Otherwise, if the key is not in there, only require the password. We can do that by doing sufficient. If I can type, there we go. So if we do that, exit out of here, we'll just make a new tab. We'll do sudo su, enter in our password. And then if we don't touch the device, we unplug it, say that it's gone, we have root anyways. This can be more insecure if you are attempting to do two-factor. Thus, it allows you to bypass two-factor if you don't have the key in. It is simple as just unplugging it. So I don't recommend it unless you do have a true application for it. So if you do want to make this the only way to authenticate using two-factor, close that terminal. We can do sudo su, go back and edit that file. And if we, not that one, we do un or remove common auth and all these other ones here. We'll exit. Actually, no, just in case, we can go back to tab, sudo su, touch the device. And just like that, we weren't prompted for a password. Now we can go ahead and exit. Now you may be thinking, what if we want to use it for our login screen as well? For example, if we go ahead and lock our laptop here, you can see all we need is a simple password to get back in. First, we're going to want to edit the pam.d file. Now, as you can see, we are running mate. This will vary on your desktop. Uh, management system, uh, make KDE, XFCE, all that. So we'll go ahead and get privilege root access, clear that out, and then nano etc pam.d, and since we're using mate, it's gonna be mate dash screensaver. Now we'll want to add in that string we added earlier. So if we do cat ect pam.d sudo, all sufficient pam u2f, we'll go ahead, copy this string and we'll add it back to mate screensaver. Oh, no, that's not what we wanted. Meta, not cat. If we head down here, we paste it and we want to enforce two factor, not make it just an optional thing. So we'll do pam required and then save it. We clear that out and go ahead and lock our screen. Take that key out prompt to unlock and if there's no key in yep so if we insert it insert the correct password please touch the device and just like that we are in now if we pull up one of my terminals here I'll show you real quick what it'll look like same thing for any desktop manager really nano etc pam.d and then kde as you can see, I have mine required for two-factor to my desktop. It's as easy as that. Hey guys, I wanted to make one little tidbit here. I did forget to mention that you'll want your USB security key to uh, basically lock your system. So as you can see here, it is currently inserted. And when we do remove it, nothing happens. Now, what we are going to want to do is we're going to real quick open our journal using journal ctl xef to go to the end and follow and there it is new usb device to found 2ccf 8543202 now what we're going to do with that is we're going to head into cd etc udev rules.d for directory and then we're going to make a new file we're going to nano 
71 dash auto lock screen dot rules. Now what this will do is make a rule set so that when your device, your USB security key is removed, it will automatically lock your screen using login control or login CTL. Now we'll do subsystem to specify this is on the USB bus. Well, the universal serial bus, I should say. Action when it is removed. ENV bracket product on the ending bracket. Excuse me, I cannot speak. Equals equals quote two CCF eight five four three two zero two and then run plus equals quote user bin login CTO space lock sessions go ahead and save that file now you guys might be asking where did I get this 2ccf8543202 you're going to look in here you should see like ID vendor ID product BCD device so it's going to be your ID vendor slash ID product 854 like here slash your BCD device with no dot and now what this is going to do oh looks like we already have some here that were replaced by the uh, libpam 71 auto lock screen rules once we remove that key that automatically locks our system now if we go ahead we'll go unlock it shouldn't work yep so insert that key unlock it touch that device and just like that our screen automatically locks the moment that key has been removed and I hope you guys had a wonderful time viewing this video. If you have any questions or concerns, or if you're having troubles trying to add this into your Linux environment, please let me know, and I'll do my best to assist you. Otherwise, tally ho, and uh, have fun with your extra security. Now to confirm that sudo does work, we can go ahead, open a new tab, sudo su, password, just like that should be asking us to touch the device and now we're logged in as root if we hit exit we'll go back open a new tab say okay sudo rm dash rf forge slash now do it just like that say we're some hacker in the laptop we'll put in our password please touch the device well device isn't there Oh, God damn it. <laughs> oh, that failed. Um, now to confirm that sudo does work, we can go ahead, open a new tab, sudo su password just like that it should be asking us to touch the device and now we're logged in as root if we hit exit we'll go back open a new tab say okay sudo rm dash rf forge slash now do it just like that say we're some hacker in the laptop we'll put in our password Please touch the device. Well, the device isn't there. Oh. God damn it. <laughs> oh, that failed. Um.